Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Jones. I am the technical editor for Projector Reviews. So joining us is AudioQuest and two of my favorite people, Isaac and Frederick. And these guys, when you want to know about anything about cables and why you need cables, I don't care if it has to do with video cables, audio cables, power, you want to know why you should get the better stuff and what does it do for your system. Um, these are the two guys that you need to know. Many people here may be familiar with who AudioQuest is, but why don't you give me a little bit of a history of the company? Of course. So AudioQuest has been in business for 40 years this year, based, based in Orange County. We're distributed across the world, and we're probably one of the largest cable manufacturer in the high-end audio and video, especially when it comes to um, assortments of SKUs. We make everything at every level of price point. So what's on screen is our top of the line speaker cable, the Dragon, that was released uh, recently. But we make entry level interconnect speaker cable like uh, Phil talked to, power, mm -hmm. ethernet, digital, toss link, everything. So we have a solution for everything. The owner of the company, Bill, his passion has always been performance. And he's understood re really early on when he started the company that Cables were a problem. Cables would damage a signal. Our motto is do no harm. And we approach that at every level. You can't throw a cable on the system and, and improve the signal. That'd be creating energy. And if we're creating energy, we'd be selling art to the power company, not to the guys who want, want to watch movies at home and, and then listen to music. But that's impossible. Um, you see many awards, obviously, you know, throughout the industry. Um, but just like Isaac is my partner in crime. Bill's partner in crime is Gard Powell. But Gard joined us about nine years ago um, from Firm and Sounds. Um, uh, one of the best uh, knowledgeable person about power when it comes to audio and video. And he was in the engineer behind the Niagara series of product, mm -hmm. if you're familiar with it. But mm -hmm. we kind of let uh, Gard loose around the building and he touched to a lot of new products. So we introduced mm -hmm. PowerQuest, our new speaker cable like the Dragon has a lot of technology that Gart um, brought to the table, our power cables as well, and now the new upcoming HDMI cables. I've had many a meeting with these guys about the audio side of the, the business. I was just telling them that um, on my, my day job deals with sound. I just drove a big old van down to their office in Orange County to pick up six miles so that would be, how many meters would that be? 10, I was just doing that calculator. There was 10,000 10 10 kilometers yeah. of, of uh, no, yeah, 10, yeah, 10, yeah, 10 kilometers, 10, yeah, 10,000 meters of, uh, of cable just for the background music in our, in the building that we're building. That's not counting the hi-fi, the theater rooms, wires, and the, uh, and uh, video cables for the theater and the classrooms and the showrooms and everything else because it makes a massive, massive, massive difference. A few days ago, Isaac and the gang called me and said, hey, um, we have some other pieces coming because everybody keeps asking me about that 8K thing. So we're here to talk about some cool new things that are coming from AudioQuest when it comes to 8K. Now, the thing that I want to get across when we talk about 8K, it's all about the bandwidth. We have done long sessions, and I will um, I will actually put, give you guys the link to our yeah. YouTube channel at the end, and where we went down that audio rabbit hole. But today, today, today is all about that video. Now, the funny thing about this is I say it's all about that video, but the, an HDMI cable is actually a video and an audio cable. Um, right, plus so, power, plus control, plus plus, you know, it's your all-in-one exactly. stop. Exactly. And the other thing we have to point out, too, is um, when people, when, when it's an HDMI cable, there's a lot of stuff going on in this cable. I mean, we're talking, there's a lot, there's like 19 different cable um, things in here that are going on, conductors in here that are going on that do different things, whether it's timing, sound video there's multiple channels of video there's a lot of stuff so that cable may look very simple on the on the on the outside but it's quite complex on the inside and one thing we have to talk about too is this 8k thing 8k sounds nice but 8k requires a lot more a lot more data so which one of you right. guys want to talk about the data requirements versus 4k HDR that you're like your Opal Blu-ray player up to this yeah. 8K thing. 
Sure, and and it's you know 8K is the resolution of 4K. There is uh, color depth, there is frame rate that will influence bandwidth. Um, but yes, Phil's correct. At the end of the day, it's all about bandwidth. The current standard, the HDMI 2.0 spec, is up to 18 gigabits. And if it's a UHD player, um, you're talking about 11 gigabit per second if it's 4K 24. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go to 8K 24, that no- number goes up tremendously. Uh, we're talking. Sorry, let me just put, pull my note to give you the right number. So 8K 24. I got it, I got it right oh, here. So 8K, thank you, sir. So, uh, so you're going from 11 to 32. Um, if you're adding 4K 120, even 8K 60, um, at 10 bit, you're at 40 gig. And then uh, with 12 bit video, which there's not really any commercially available uh, content right now in 12 bit and not, not really any panels, but you can go up to 48. So that's where that new HDMI 2.1 spec comes from, is for those new resolution. And 8K 24 is around, 4K 24 will be around. Um, yeah. It's already there with PCs, but it'll be around with the new consoles as soon as they launch next month. Um, so that bigger pipeline, that larger highway will be necessary for that information. Yeah. And thank you for bringing well, we up this taking, slide. Yeah, you know, we are taking bribes uh, directly to those email addresses <laughs> we posted earlier. If you were able to get a hold of one of those new 8K consoles, I trust you we tried. Well, the Sony guy I was we'll, there. I think we'll test it for you, right? Yeah, exactly. But, um, exactly. Okay. So I'm glad you brought up this chart because there's a couple yeah. things we're talking about. The cables we're going to be talking about today can support up to 48. Lower bandwidth even longer than that, if, if theoretically. You can't because that's just the way it works. But most of the time, 48, it's a nice idea. But it, but right now, that's way more than what you need. So the benefit of this is you buy these types of cables. You don't have to replace these types of cables for a long, 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 long time. So let me give you an example. Movies are going to be shot in 24 frames per second. So 8K24 doesn't require more than 32. Um, if you look at 4K 120 or even 8K 60P, most TVs are only 10-bit panels. All TVs, all displays are only 10-bit panels. So 12-bit at 4K 120 is 48. Those panels don't exist. So no, and, and it won't. And I so, always like to point out, Phil. The people think, oh, it's two bits more. It's not that much. What's well, actually going from a billion color to 68 billion color. Exactly. You're raising yeah. the number dramatically. Um, you go from 8 bit to 12 bit. You go from 8 bit, 8 bit to 10 bit. You go from 16 million yeah, at 8 bit to a billion. A one at billion. billion yeah. One billion <laughs> at, uh, at, at, uh, at, at, uh, at 10 bit. So, but the main thing that you need to know is if you buy a good cable, one of these new 48 gigabit cables, you're good for a long time. In fact, there's a thing called DSC compression that allows that cable and this standard to support up to 10K 120. So it's going to be a long, 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 yeah. long, 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 DSC's long time cool it, before you have to do anything. Yeah, DSC is really cool because there's lossless compression on both ends. So even if not all your gear is the latest and greatest five years from now, 10 years from now, who knows when we'll need more bandwidth, the cable will be able to be used in the 48 gig bandwidth and without replacing. And you're absolutely right. And for a lot of folks, you're wall mounting that TV, you're installing that projector, the cables aren't hanging on the walls, we hope. They're inside the walls. So you don't exactly. want to have to reopen everything. You're not upgrading your plumbing every three, four years in your home. You don't want to be upgrading the cable three, four years. Um, yes. You want to buy the right one today. Yes, I have, I have a saying. It's yeah. called cry once, buy <laughs> once, cry once. You yes. buy, exactly. spend a little bit more, and it'll last a lot longer. So yeah. saving a little bit of money in order to, and then having to do it again at a later date really isn't the best use of your money. So so buy once, cry once. That's an important and thing. thing. And I'll let Isaac explain it. The new, cool thing with those new 48 gig cable is they'll perform better on a non 8K standard, even with your no, normal player. The, the, the way you achieve 48 partly with the spec, and then we can talk about the audio quests um, technologies we're adding to that, but a new 48 gig cable reduces noise and distortion mm-hmm. because of the geometry. Um, if folks are familiar with a CAT 6A cable versus a mm-hmm. CAT 6, well, you can do 10 gig network instead mm-hmm. of one gig because the mm-hmm. pitch is tighter. There's more spin per inch on the wire. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, it's the same kind of idea between 18 and uh, 48. So on the three main data pairs, 
there's more cable, there's more twist. There's a fourth data pair that was there already, it was used for clock, and it was not the same material. Now it's equal to the other three data pairs and it has the same pitch. That's how you go from to 48, because it's four times 12 gig per channel versus three times six. But by doing that, the cable will look and sound better, will give, give you a better experience. So even if you're not planning to upgrade your system to, a, to 4K, you're not a gamer, a 48 gig cable will be better today. Okay. If you have a good HDMI cable, the old HDMI cables used to use, think of it as three lanes of traffic. Yeah. Um, and each lane could support six, okay? Well, there was always a fourth lane that was just used for clock and other things that weren't being used. So a good, so not using that fourth lane. Long as that lane is good and it should have been at the equal quality, now it's, I'm already at four, um, six plus six plus six plus six <laughs> equals 24, <laughs> right? And then now I just got to see if I can shove instead of six down each line, if I can shove 12 down each line. Yeah. And 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 I and that's what got me was uh, most companies are talking about the maximum limitation of a copper cable. It's it was it was limited, and that had to do with. And when you start talking about the twist, I never even thought about that. And that's yeah. how you guys are are capable of shoving more data down yeah. these copper it's cables is because of the tighter tolerances. Standard. It's a very strict standard that we're happy to say we're going to be the first one to meet that new certification. So HDMI 2.1 spec was released years ago. I mean, this year mm -hmm. felt like 12 years in a, mm -hmm. <laughs> at the same time, but three years ago, the spec was launched. The test, uh, the final test, the CTS and the certification was finalized September 1st. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. will have and product that will meet that standard. And there's no 24, 32 gig standard. The examples you gave were great, Phil. Mm -hmm. There's only a 48 gig st standard. Yeah. If you're building the highway, it's the four lane, you got to do 48 or nothing. And we're, yeah, we're the first one to need it up to five meters. Mm -hmm. So we'll have up to five meter cables available at full 48 gig. And this is the, the logo you'll see on products that yeah. need that ultra high speed uh, cable. The cable is always yeah. called ultra high speed, not 2.1. Exactly. Because exactly. two ones can be the features, right? You can support exactly. VR or you can support uh, VRR, but nothing else. And some mm -hmm. TVs do today. Mm -hmm. um, we have to support everything. We have to do exactly. the whole. There is no 2.1 standard. It's almost like, if I do, I want a fully loaded 2.1 car. <laughs> you know, a base well, car. You know, one car may have. You know, it's stripped down and it has VRR and auto low latency mode. You step yeah. up to the next car. It's got quick media switching and quick frame transport. Yeah. And then you get the you get the top of the line 911 turbo, and now it's 48 gig with all of the trim and all of the stuff. So it no. isn't really a standard. We don't care what's in the car. We're just building the highway for your car <laughs> yeah, to do whatever exactly. it wants to do. So, so basically, when you see that Ultra HD logo, you're buying a Bugatti Veyron. It's got everything in it. It's got the <laughs> biggest horsepower. It's got every trick. It's got everything in the book. And and we while we talk 48, um, they don't really want to talk numbers because most customers are terrified of numbers. And numbers so they are just, boring. Yeah, yeah. So they just called it Ultra High Speed. Now you said that sometimes probably the early the early packaging may not have this. Is correct. that what you said? Yeah, correct. But you, but you will, but it will. But if you see 48 on the, if you see the 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 the, the model called 48, you know it's going right. to do it. And then later you'll start seeing the the sticker because on and the box. For the folks on the call today, you're the first people of the public here by this. Our official announcement is actually two weeks from now. So, yeah, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but, ultra uh, high we're super, speed. Super excited. Yeah, we were mid mid production when the certification was finalized earlier uh, last month. Um, so we wanted product for the holidays, the new consoles are coming, there's customers that want the product today. Some walls are open, some projects are in completion, people want their cable. It, it, you're gonna see product in the coming weeks. Exactly, so let's talk a little bit because we um, more because um, a lot of times people get caught up on this 8K thing. And like, mm -hmm. and like you said, Frederick, a lot of it, and Isaac, a lot of this has nothing to do with it, resolution. So let's go through and talk about these real quick. Sure. The first thing, dynamic HDR. And yeah. that's been around since Dolby Vision and HDR10. But the way that I kind of explain this to people is think of Dolby Vision as um, Coca-Cola and think of um, uh, HDR10 as Pepsi. There's also dynamic HDR. It's a white can that says 
Cola. Cola. <laughs> Cola. Okay. So, so, so there's three different standards, and these cables support all three of those, correct? Yes. Correct. And the new spec it includes those standards, so th those technologies are, are available today, even if you don't have a 48 gig cable. But they weren't part of the spec. Um, exactly. Now they'll be implemented, and you'll see more product. But yes, our cables can fully support it. Gives you that 17 and a half um, f-stops of difference on your contrast ratio. Um, and more and more products will support either Dolby Vision or HDR. It's the good old DTS and Dolby. Which one do you support? You, you pay yeah. the license and you develop the technology yeah. for it. The cable, the, we don't pick sides. We're, we're like Switzerland. We're neutral. We'll exactly. work with everybody. Yeah. The other thing that, that's kind of important about this is contrast shows problems. <laughs> okay. So you could probably hide something when you have zero to 100 nits of brightness. The more right. brightness range you have, the more likely you are to see noise in the, you know, speckles in the highlights and and noise in the shadows because you got instead of having this much range to compare to video, you got this much range. And Absolutely. if there's any problems with the video signal and the transfer, you're going, you're going, you're going. Oh, to see and it. It's what I've noticed more with HDR content. We even with our current generation cable is. When it's an HDR signal is really where it shines. It's 10-bit video, yeah. and you get that extra range. Resolution is great, but if you're at a certain distance, if you wear glasses like you two guys, <laughs> might not be your main concern. Colors and contrast, super <laughs> important. Exactly. And, of course, we can also talk about things like frame rate. Um, if yep. you're a gamer, we found out that they are talking about all these new games that are coming, but people are uh, most gamers are far more concerned with the frame rate, the smoother motion which yeah. um, makes the gaming experience better. <laughs> the reason why I brought this up, because many people bring it up for the PlayStation and the right. Xbox. Theoretically, it can do 120 frames per second. If yeah. I was drawing um, myself standing in front of a white wall, not, not moving, that computer, that game processor can dry that really, really, really fast. But the second I put trees, buildings, action, dirt, and all the other stuff, it's got to take a this little is, bit more yeah. time. So that's where that variable refresh rate comes in. So when I'm standing there with, in front of a white wall, it speeds up. Or if, and then when uh when and the TV speeds up, it's refresh rate. And then when I got to draw something really complex, everybody calms down and it draws it fully before it moves on to the next frame. And that's that variable refresh rate. So people keep talking about 120 frames per second, but it's more about the variable refresh rate thing. That yeah, um that matters the most. Up to 120, because you're right, exactly. depending if you go from a cinematic to an action scene, it will change. Or simply if you're using your console for movies and gaming, well, your, your movie's gonna be a 24 frame and it will switch to 60 or 120, whatever you're 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 playing after that. Exactly. So so variable refresh rate is basically the display and the TV the and the computer or game system talk to each other. Yeah. And the computer tells the TV when to move on, okay? Yeah. Oh, I could draw this really fast. Go, 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 go. Hold on. Takes a little bit more time. Go, okay? So that way you end up with less tearing. You end up with a better picture. Um, but it's up to 120 frames per second. But a lot of those games, it's not going to be running continuously at 120 frames per second. So variable refresh rate is something that is important. Um, ensures um, no tearing, lower lag, and everything else. So so there's, a, there's some other features here. Um, auto latency mode, you wanna talk about that, guys? Sure, that one's pretty easy, actually. The low, lit, low latency mode is usually a mode in the TV or projector that's optimized for gaming. That's well, you'll have the less lag. But usually, in the past, I had to turn it on manually. Auto just means that the game console or the PC will tell the TV or the projector to go to game mode automatically. So that one's actually pretty easy, but it's super convenient because you don't want to say, hey, what's what's wrong? And then you realize you have to go three levels of menu to start that mode. Um, it's just a trigger. It's an automatic trigger um, that uh, I know the Xbox already does and will do on the new generation. PlayStation has their own way to do it that's called something different when it's a sony tv with a ps with a playstation but i think the new ps5 will just do um a llm and the cable yes. does it that, that that's really a trigger that's easy yeah and exactly one and that's one of the benefits I'm, of a standard well, go ahead go ahead isaac it's one of the things i'm most looking forward to being deployed in future generations of projectors actually as we're talking about that here because it's going to allow us to much more enjoyably 
watch our Netflix or our Hulu along with our Kaleidoscape or uh, Oppo Player Plus Gaming, it will speed up those transitions. So subjectively for us, it won't even just be about what you see on screen. It'll be a, a much more seamless user experience. Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the things, like I, I've been poking all these guys from the different companies, um, from the yeah. Sonys to the BenQs to the Epson and I, um, I don't really, I'm not really in a rush for 8K on a projector, but variable refresh rate, auto load yes. latency mode, quick media switching. So when it switches from wow. the menu system on a Netflix to the yeah. actual movie, I'm not sitting there waiting for the projector to go. Ah, 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 right. ah, 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 ah. And then after like, you know, 10 seconds, the picture pops up. Those are the kind of things that, um, that I can see a big value for far beyond um, when it comes to uh, that. So, so a lot of these conversations, when we talk about auto low latency mode, variable refresh rate, those are things that we can utilize that would be a beneficial for any projector now. And the other one too, that before was not really a conversation for projectors, but it's becoming a conversation for projectors is enhanced audio return channel. Because a lot of projectors, like the big boy I got sitting here, is a home theater projector and you plug a whole bunch of expensive stuff into it, right? But a lot of times people are buying uh, TV replacement solutions. Ult, um, short, like the big thing, the big buzz is 4K ultra short throw laser smart projectors or laser TVs. And all of those have apps built in like Netflix. And you got to get the sound from the projector back to the receiver or the sound bar. And that is where this comes in. So can you talk about what audio return channel is and then also what is enhanced audio return channel? Isaac, you can take this one. I know how much you love uh, sound. <laughs> I, I I do love I do love audio and music. In fact, uh, somebody famous agrees with us. Uh, George Lucas uh, famously right. said <laughs> that fifty percent of the experience of going to the movies is the soundtrack. It's the music. It's all the sound effects. Uh, that you hear. One of the things that we take a lot of pride in at AudioQuest and have for a long time is ARC. Um, a little dirty secret in HDMI is that you didn't have to create the tolerance of the ARC channel to the same tolerance as the data channels previously in order to get all of the bandwidth. AudioQuest never took that shortcut. We were always already making cables that were built to the same specification on that twisted pair. So the good news for owners of AudioQuest cables today is that they're already eARC ready. But with the new generation, we pay much more attention to some of the details that we'll get to later. And that's going to give a great deal of more uh, noise reduction. Um, mm -hmm. Best part about eARC though, is you finally get the full bandwidth solutions that you expect from a surround receiver coming out of your TV. So that's what you see on screen, the Dolby Atmos, DTS-X. So there's no longer any compression uh, or changing of the bit rate in order to get it past um, the connections on both sides. So a great opportunity, even for soundbar lovers, to get a much better experience. Exactly. Now, now some other things about this too, because I'm I, I have kind of an audio side hustle too. That's my main job, <laughs> so, so I better know a little bit about audio because that's what actually pays the bills. This is my hobby. All right. So, so the um when it comes to when it comes to HDMI, a lot of times people do not see HDMI as an audio connection. And eight standard HDMI, um, using ARC can pass far more data than an optical cable. Okay. Yes. Um, when you go to eARC, it goes, it's 37 times more data than just ARC. So everybody talks about ultra, you know, high res music and, and high, you know, um, high data, you know, that type of stuff. You get the highest quality. You know, it's one of the most, the, it passes way more data. I think it was like 16 uh, megabits per second for optical, one gigabit. For, yeah. for for yeah. um yeah. For, for yeah so yeah. it's something the difference is just nuts and that's so just the basic specs Phil our, as as Isaac explained our current cable what what's on the market right now that our pair was six gig actually because we just made yeah. it like the other three the new pair exactly. will be twelve gig there'll exactly. never be twelve gig of audio in it exactly but if I, you have a data pair built to withstand twelve gig it has lower noise distortion so the sound quality 
the damage done to the signal will be much less. And that's what's and one really of the funny bad. things you guys used to do is you do we you guys who have been doing HDMI audio demos when I've been to Best Buy events and regular retail yeah. events and and events and people kept thinking it's just a digital cable. I, I should hear it. I shouldn't hear a difference. And it's like, no, there's a lot of stuff going on in that wire, you know? Yeah. And the question is, is all the components in that wire built at the same quality? And if they're not, it's going to affect the way it sounds and the way that it looks. So, so, so that is an important thing. So arc is important. Now, I, it's a couple of things I want to point out about this that we want to stress about, about arc. Um, when you start getting into the longer distances, Isaac, you said your cable can go. What's the maximum length of, the, of your new 48 cable? How long Five is it? Five meters. Five meters, 15 feet. So a lot of companies' cables cannot support that, which means you have to go into maybe somebody may come up with a, um, a, a HDMI extender system. But mm -hmm. a lot of HDMI extender systems don't pass ARC, let alone yep. eARC. And by the time you get a piece that can pass eARC, um, the price of the extender costs more than if you had just put the cable in the wall. <laughs> so, oh, so keep absolutely. that in mind. Too. We, we have long length solutions too that are not 48 gig, they're 18 gig. Um, my favorite one's called Cherry Cola. It's actually a hybrid cable. So the data That's pair- That's in my house hybrid. actually. That's what runs yeah. my house. So great. Uh, it's a fiber cable and then you have copper cable for the audio return and the power. Mm -hmm. That audio return channel can go up to 30 meters. Mm -hmm. So 100 feet, yeah. no problem. Um, exactly. it's full e and, and it can do full ER and it's got carbon loaded PVC just like our carbon HDMI cable that we offer in, in the passive section. So in terms of sound, it's a pretty good sounding cable that most people use for video. But if you if you are using eARC, it's going to be totally compatible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and actually that leads to the what uh, Isaac wanted to talk about, just the improvement on the cable and what we do that's different. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you say you know all cables are digital. I couldn't hear the difference. That that we, that's our job description for Isaac and I. That's what we do for a living. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um but i think you want to explain what what's that mean and or, or what's the best way to explain this yeah absolutely you know i think people tend to think of digital cables as being like a light switch it kind of works or it doesn't work but that is a, a really a simplification of what's happening um a, a guy i respect a lot in our industry once said very well that all cables or all digital cables are analog cables and the dirty secret about all of this digital that we're listening to and that we're watching is that it's really only ones and zeros in the very beginning. And then after that, it's transformed into an, it's just a voltage signal. It's an analog waveform. So we need to do as good a job as we can uh, to protect that. One of the major differences between this generation and the previous generation is on screen. So if you look at those four data pairs, uh, which are the orange, green, yellow, and blue, and then the eARC, which is brown, you'll notice that the quote unquote drain wire is built to the same size, the same gauge, and the same tolerance as the primary data pairs. This is the great revelation that Garth Powell brought to us at AudioQuest that these aren't in fact drains. This is much more like pin one on a balanced XLR cable. So this is a ground return. That means it has equal impact on your audio and video as the primary data pairs. And so AudioQuest has devoted a great deal of resources to improving the quality of those drains, which is partly why the new generation of cable provides you a superior performance right now. You'll get better performance today. You're not waiting for 8K panels, 8K projectors, no matter what you're into, you're going to be shocked at the improvement over the previous generation. Yeah, and then you also talked about, you already talked about the fact that the tolerances are tighter yeah. and, and yeah. the way that they're wound is one of the reasons why you guys can get the distances you can from a passive copper cable that most people cannot achieve. Yeah, copper and also uh, silver. We use silver in a lot of okay, uh, our copper model. Okay, so so, so let's talk about that. So you, use, so you guys both use copper and silver. So even in the HDMI cables, you guys use silver? Or is it Correct. mostly copper? And, okay. So, so what makes you decide between the two? Well, silver is recognized uh, academically as being the, the superior metal for noise dissipation. 
Uh, there are other metals that people want to talk about that have interesting characteristics at different frequencies, but there's a fancy engineering word that, that is linear. That means treats all things the same. Silver is the only metal that treats all frequencies exactly the same and treats them uh, if it's faster, essentially, it moves energy faster than copper. So the more money that the customer has, right, in the line, and this is where Fred was alluding to essentially the first full lineup that will do this, mm -hmm. we'll deploy more and more silver until we get to solid silver conductors that have mm -hmm. none of the trade-offs of copper, except of course for cost. So mm -hmm. wherever you are comfortable in terms of price, whatever you're looking for in terms of performance, there's usually going to be a mix of some silver to get you some of that extra performance, but to keep the cost lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. we do that on the four data pairs, it's equal on the ERC pair. And even the drain wire, the uh, the ground reference that uh, Isaac talked about, gets an upgrade along the line at the cinnamon uh, family. If you're familiar with a model line, you'll see something really interesting done, even at the price point of cinnamon. Okay. So the other thing too is, you guys do your cables differently. So like I said, if you cut one open, it looks different. Right. So so one of the other things too is is um solid solid connect yes. um, conductor so you so why don't you talk a little bit about that isaac and what's the benefit of having a um strand why do you believe solid is better than stranded well i think you hit it right on the head you know, solid core conductors are one of the founding ingredients of audio quest over 40 years a recognition that solid core is generally better what you see on the screen helps to make it easier easier to visualize Every single conductor you have, whether it's one larger solid conductor or 20 or 30 smaller strands, when you apply a voltage potential across, it becomes an antenna. And so you see it radiating and gathering all of that noise. So you can either have 19 of these and minimize that interaction of those fields, or you can have hundreds of these when you start looking at a traditional cable that's built with a stranded construction. You yeah, don't if you want look at those. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, there you go. And so that makes it really easy to see how once you visualize all those extra fields, there's hundreds in a traditional cable versus minimizing that to just the 19 primary conductors in an audio class mm -hmm. cable. Yeah, and it's something that, you know, in uh, network cables, everything's solid core, right? Mm -hmm. When we had traditional phone lines, when, when you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Canada, when Valve Canada was running wires throughout your home, those phone lines were solid core. Why? They had less noise and distortion and could carry a signal on a long, long distance. Mm -hmm. So we didn't invent solid core, but we've applied it to audio video whenever possible. So let me ask you, why don't other people use solid core? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is cost, and the other is difficulty in sourcing these materials. Now, AudioQuest is, is famous for using proprietary metals. The AudioQuesters, your people who have been uh, either consuming or selling AudioQuest cables have known for a long time that we have long grain copper, perfect surface copper, perfect surface copper plus, and perfect surface silver. Plus we have silver plated versions of the long grain copper. If you compare the metallurgy applied to AudioQuest solid core conductors, it's remarkably different than what you see in others. Um, the standard conventional copper is pitted and corroded. And the reason for that isn't because they're trying to make it pitted and corroded. It's because they're running it for speed. If you're trying to make a lot of cables at 90 plus points of margin, you have to run it very fast so you can get the most amount of yield for the least amount of time. It's just basic economics in terms of how you do manufacturing. Mm -hmm. It takes us a lot longer to extrude these metals very slowly to just cost more money. And that's partly why AudioQuest offers such a breadth of product because we want mm -hmm. stuff at the top for those of us who are interested in that and have the means. But something that I've said a lot for many years is everybody deserves luxury, everybody. So even yeah. if you can afford a pearl, our expectation is that you should get the very best experience for that investment. Well, let's now. You brought up a big point. Like people go, why do um, higher end speaker companies, um, speaker wire from higher end companies, cost more than other companies? Well, because of the way they do it is different. If um, if I'm trying to source a a solid core thing, there's only a few places you can do it, or you got to do it yourself. If I'm looking for multi-strand, I can get that anywhere. An economy of scale means it's cheaper. So yes. 
Um, if I go the route that everybody goes, I can do it cheaper. It doesn't mean that it's better. It's just cheaper. And if you're willing to, and, and if you want better, sometimes you got to go it alone, which makes it cost more. And that's one of the reasons why when you look at this, so when you like if so when you cut them open, I say the reason they the fact that it looks different is the reason why it costs more because it ain't like anybody else. Everything has to be done specifically the way they want it done, which means it's going to cost more. We could some yeah, other geek guys. All the time. And, yeah, yeah. The analogy we use all the time is actually so one of our colleagues started it and we we plagiarized it. It's macaroni and cheese. You can yeah. get a box of KD for 85 cents at Costco, and yeah. it's macaroni and cheese. I can make like you something. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. cheese like product. I can make you something, or I can go to my favorite pub, and we'll use good pasta, we'll use good cheese, gruyere, maybe throw in some pulled pork or some lobster in there. It's I'm the going to your place. <laughs> Come to Montreal, best best place for food in the world. Uh, you, it's still mac and cheese, but the ingredients. <laughs> are more refined and your experience is better. It's the same exactly. analogy. And it, exactly. everybody, I think exactly. it could be an HDMI cable if you want to get the best. Well, the exactly. ingredients matter and the way you put them together matters. Exactly, exactly. So so that has a big, that's a big part um, yeah. in, 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 in the difference between your stuff. And like I said, now, now what is this drawing right here talking about? Is this the different, um, now, is that just the difference? What's going on here? Explain ah. this to me. Yes, so here you're getting an opportunity to see some of the improvements as you graduate in the line in terms of performance. One of the things I wanna draw attention to and something that our founder, Bill Lowe, is extremely proud of is when you look at Pearl 48, which is the least expensive cable, which is on the left, and uh, in this example, this looks to be vodka uh, on the right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Freddie, but I don't see any carbon there. <laughs> so the spread here, um, you'll notice that there are some things in common. Solid core, the precision, the tolerances, and the way that things are built don't change. That's really important. What does change is the quality of the materials that we can deploy for the money. So when you move from Pearl, you start to add some of that silver-plated copper that we spoke about for the primary data pairs. When you move up to vodka, you get a couple of key technologies. The first thing is you'll notice that that little metal foil uh, shielding is replaced by something black. That's a carbon loaded material. So that's a high loss material that's capable of absorbing a lot of energy, a lot of noise and distortion from the outside and turn it into heat before it even makes its way into the conductors. It's one of the things that costs the most money and it's not even a conductor. You'll also notice that those critical drain or ground reference wires are now made of silver plated copper as well. So everything in the cable is getting improvements in terms of the construction. And as Freddie implied, the quality of the mac and cheese ingredients is simply improving with each step. Exactly. So, so the way I look at it, um, and we could, we could sit here and talk about all of this different, all the different advantages. I Let's really, do it. Really I'm ready. I think you. we can sit here and just do that. So cancel yeah. your plans, everybody. Yeah. I really <laughs> encourage people to come in and uh, spend some time with, uh, with, um, with Frederick and Isaac, and I'm going to have you guys come back, and we're going to have another one of these conversations. It's going to be 90 minutes for for um in another in, in um at another um venue, and we'll make sure you guys are aware of that as well. But like I said, there's a lot of attention to detail besides just the cables. It's how do you connect the ends <laughs> to the oh cable? My uh, all this stuff, all this stuff matters too. So what is, what are you showing here? So there's a couple of things going on. Uh, for one, you notice that that metal foil uh, on the left is kind of crinkly. It's important to recognize that that's not just cheap. It also means that it doesn't dissipate noise linearly. There's no way that the electric magnetic fields hitting that are consistent. The same thing for that stamped head. All of these things induce, and you can measure this, nasty vertices of electrical current. It also doesn't help that it makes it a lot less reliable. When you mm -hmm. use a die cast head, when you use better shielding of one piece, not only do you prevent noise and distortion, at least most of it from wake, making its way into that critical, that's a circuit board, right? Mm -hmm. Preventing its way from making it into that circuit board, you're also making the cable a great deal more reliable. On average, our failure rate is measured in the one per many thousands of units. And when we speak to many of our large scale vendors who deploy generic 
or AudioQuest, everybody has a story about a generic cable failing. Every one of them, 100%. On average, we see about 3% of people have one story or two about an audio quest yeah. failure yeah. which I, will, I will tell you i will tell you that i can testify to that i do oh my god i can't think of how many trade shows i've done in, <laughs> in, in my lifetime and that's that that's counting major trade shows vendor trade shows um our own dealer trade shows and we always use audio quest wire why because i know that i've never had an hdmi cable go bad <laughs> I and I can't say that. Yeah. I can't yeah. say that. And remember, because remember, we're plugging them in, doing the show, unplugging them, throwing them all in some box, right. going all the way across to another city, plugging it in, playing it, unplugging it, throwing it in a box. So we're not. So we're talking about unplugging and plugging and unplugging and plugging and unplugging and plugging in for fifty times, you know, seventy times a year, and. Every time I pull out that audio quest cable and I plug an HDMI cable in, I've never had one fail on me yet. And to yeah. me, that's worth it to me personally, just for my own peace of mind. Because two o'clock in the morning, setting up a trade show in Denver and the cable doesn't work. And now you're running around from booth to booth to booth to try to borrow a cable is an absolute nightmare. So, and as a custom installer, same thing. You want to be able to plug that sucker in and know that I'm good. You know, I'm not going to have a call at, on Thanksgiving that my home theater <laughs> system is not working anymore because that always seems to happen. I'd like to thank you guys. And I probably am going to have you come back and, and talk more about your solutions. But I do want to cover um, a couple of things before we let you go. Um, sure. You have your, your long distance solutions. Like I said, you have your 18 gig solutions, right? And that's the ones that are on screen right now. Your Cherry Cola, which is your optical, which also has that analog. I know it had the copper for the audio return channel, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Copper and okay. carbon. So it's built like okay. that Vodka cable we just looked okay. at for the uh, arc channels. Okay. And then the Pearl and the Forest are active copper cables, which means there's a little amplifier to it, to basically push the signal from point A to point B, right? I, is that actually, how it's not an amplifier, Phil. That's something people, uh, it's a big misunderstanding. The, uh, the bigger head, the one you see on the left, is on the display side. So the projector it's or the pulling. display. <laughs> it's a no. It's a filter. It doesn't pull. Okay. It's filtering. So it's okay. removing noise and allowing that copper connection to help the signal travel a lot further. Um, it is active, but just like Cherry Cola, there's five volt on HDMI, so we don't need an external power supply. We don't. We're not relying to the USB port of the TV, the projector that may or may not work yeah. Yeah. all the time. Um, yeah. Those active cables are plug and play, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Just remember, there one. Hold on, one more thing about them too. They're bought. They're single direction, okay? Correct. Because Correct. it's powered by the display, yeah. and if you plug them in backwards, they don't it's work. not being powered. It's not going to work. So follow the arrows. <laughs> That's I, I just think a one of the thing. interesting things about long length, just as a as a quick side note, because it's cool that Fred mentioned is. The reason that long length struggle to pass information isn't because they're not passing information, it's that the long length induces so much noise and distortion that receivers don't know how to distinguish the quote unquote simple one or zero anymore. And that's why this is a lot more complicated than it seems at first blush. And so that these devices are actually filtering out the noise that the cables know have to have been induced over those long lengths. So, okay. you know, more indications that the industry at large is starting to come to terms with noise and distortion is the mm -hmm. primary defeater of what we love, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. being closer to the mu music or the movies. Exactly. So, so, and then of course, now we have, you guys have your new solutions coming soon and pricing you're not going to tell us i'm probably sure you're not going to tell us and but we'll find out about that soon enough so there are 48 so those are 18 gig solutions these are 48 gig solutions and like i said um, all those can benefits when it comes to all of the other features that have nothing to do with 8k plus if you have yep. an 8k or 120 frame per second tv which these manufacturers are promoting and these receivers can pass Go Denon, go Marantz, that these systems can pass. You're going to start seeing sound bars. Even if they don't pass video through them, you still need that art capability to get the most out of these sound bars as well as these receivers. You may not see very many Apple TVs and Roku's coming, but those games are coming. And of course, if you're a big hardcore PC guy, it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Even if I'm not running 48, I may be running 
4K at 76 frames per second. And I just exceeded 18. So even if I'm not doing 4K 120, uh, yeah. if I do anything exceeding 4K 60, I'm going to need this. Okay. So, and that even includes like 8K 24. So you guys, thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure to hang out with with you and, and Frederick. And I wish we had more time to talk. Um, but I will probably have you come back and we can do a um, maybe a session and we'll just work our way through. As you get your pricing um, announced, maybe I'll have you come back and we can have another little another little conversation. All right? Absolutely. Phil, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for having us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we really it's, – it's been fun. Hopefully you guys have learned a little bit about cables and, and why um, AudioQuest commands a premium. So we will talk to you. We will talk to you soon.